So uh, after Excel, we started learning Power BI in a brief mode. We, we don't want to go into the depth because the way we perceive, the way we have analyzed market, Excel is one of the most uh, prominent tool we choose for uh, data analytics. And we're going to go ahead with that. Okay. So please don't waste too much of your time uh, in other tools. I still believe Excel can basically uh, get you a good job and we can start working on that uh, in terms of progressive learning. Okay, so rather than keep, you know, <clears throat> learning all the tools available in the world, let's try to concentrate on one tool and let's have a know-how of, you know, the others, right? So, we, so yesterday <clears throat> we had, uh, you know, uh, 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 fair understanding of Microsoft uh, Power BI desktop. Again, it's more or less, uh, you know, another tool from Microsoft similar to Excel, even the menus, buttons and everything. Now today <clears throat> we will... Uh, like to go to some other companies where they have some specific tools <coughs> now what do you mean by specific specific means these tools are basically made for a specific type of analysis and not uh, everything and anything can be done in these things excel is a raw generic tool as you might say power bi is a tool which is more or less uh, you know specializes in visualization okay uh, in terms of data analytics, normally the analytics are, uh, you know, <clears throat> done precursor to the visualization as we see in the steps, right? Means, uh, you know, collect, uh, retrieve, clean, model, um, then uh, basically uh, build the kind of inference and then present. This is how the progressive thing works. But in terms of Tableau, they are more concentrated on visualization part of it. In terms of Google Analytics, let's have a, you know, good understanding of Google Analytics because many of the jobs, uh, you know, description, they might uh, have a kind of insertion saying, okay, you should know Google Analytics. And that's what we are targeting today. We might complete Google Analytics as well as Tableau. Okay. So let's start understanding Google Analytics. <coughs> have anybody used Google Analytics here? Anybody yeah. from web yeah. development? Oh, wow, wow, yeah. good, good, good. Uh, so uh, could you please tell us about, uh, you know, Google Analytics? What, what do you think about Google Analytics? No, no, actually, uh, I, I have not worked on this. I, I just wanted to share that I have done the Google Data Analytics certification. Oh, so, wow. yeah. yeah. <laughs> but this thing is different, right? So I know, data analysis is a bit different. Uh, we are going to study that, ma'am. Means we're going to discuss uh, what's in, what out, and, you know, all the other things, basically, right? And that's why we have Google Analytics and uh, as a kind of inclusion to our uh, overall uh, these uh, you know discussion sessions okay so uh, as uh, you know um, uh, as uh, you know you might have seen there are various advertisement by google as google uh, you know we all use google uh, accounts right for our smartphone androids and all those things so google as in gmail service or google as a company have a maximum amount of data capture as far as the industry goes now how they leverage these things through Google Analytics, or it's also called as a digital analytics. Because this was the first uh, web analytics company to be specified. They started analyzing users in terms of their behavior, in terms of their regional movement, in terms of their, you know, <clears throat> overall, uh, you know, behavior, uh, in terms of frequency of movements, frequency of online presence, purchase, and so on and so forth. Okay, we'll discuss this thing in, in a step-by-step -step manner. Currently, Google Analytics has its version 4. So it's called GA4 or just G4. So whenever uh, in a job description, you have these, uh, you know, um, phrases like G4 or GA4, please remember this, they are talking about the Google Analytics, which is also referred as a digital analysis. Okay. Now <clears throat> I'm going to guide you uh, how to do it as Madam have done. It's a simple course. You have to cover around, I think, six and a half hours and they'll give you a certification. Believe me, please try it on your own. I'm going to give you the links of Google Analytics as well. Now let's try, uh, try to understand what is Google Analytics and how it differs from Excel. Okay, so Google Analytics is a web analytics or a digital analysis. These analytics don't normally go and, you know, um, get any data and start processing. These are specifically for web analytics or they call it digital analysis. What is web analytics? They normally try to cover <clears throat> the overall analytics of a user visiting a website or number of users visiting a website or number of users visiting a website for a reason. Now, this is a kind of deduction we are talking about. In analytics, we deduce something, right? In Google Analytics, we deduce 
consumer behavior or online user behavior to be precise. And that's why Google Analytics uh, are being used by quite a good number of company just to analyze their web visitors. Let's say Ravindra Pandey visits um, America's uh, CNN news portal every day for three or four minutes. Now how Google knows that Ravindra Pandey is sitting in Mumbai trying to access a CNN.com, not CNN.in or CNN.com slash in. These are regional servers which we are talking about CNN.in or CNN.slash.in. Okay. But these uh, regional servers, they give you the news specifically to a given region. But when you go to CNN.com, you get the global news. Same for BBC. Now, when CNN uses, uh, you know, Google Analytics, they try to, you know, understand why Ravinder Pandey from Mumbai tried to visit CNN.com as a global site. Well, this user has a specific liking for global news. Now, this is how the behavior is getting traced. Could you understand what I'm trying to say here? Could you understand the Ravindra Pandey's, uh, you know, example of tracking user behavior? Yes. Yeah. Now, similarly, if Ravindra Pandey visits Amazon.in, that's a local Amazon site from his mobile on almost one service kind of scenario to check out if there are good offers. And this inference also can be collected by Google without even you knowing it. Because when you talk about Android, <coughs> Android phone has inbuilt trace, inbuilt, uh, you know, uh, this uh, data collection mechanism built into the OS. And that's why basically European Union sued Google for this thing, like without uh, knowledge of the user, you are tracking his or her data in terms of username, Gmail address, the time he or she was on that website. Let's say if Ravindra spends five minutes on Amazon, almost weekly on Amazon India server, and uh, let's say two or three minutes on uh, Amazon.com, that's a global server. What, what can you infer as a data analyst? What can you guide me? with these two instances, from these two instances. Any, any thought? Think, how can you generate business insights from these data, data points? Like Ravindra Pandey visits Amazon.in at least four minutes, uh, you know, per week and around similar uh, or three or four minutes on Amazon.com global site. So what do you infer from this? Any suggestion, any thought process. See, I'm just trying to kickstart your analysis thought process. Please, please express yourself. Tell so me. I think this is how this is how Google collect the information that mm -hmm. um, oh, Mr. Ravindra Pandey is looking for this and this product from Amazon. So Google really? started showing all the ads uh, related to that product or similar to those product, uh, whatever you are searching on Amazon mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, this is how you know other websites also gets the business very rightly said very rightly said now google as uh, uh, android as now owned by google they have uh, you know infiltrated these uh, uh, tracing mechanism into this operating system now whenever ravindra pandey visit amazon well about product suggestion that's a amazon's intelligence thought process in terms of products from count, uh, you know, um, counterparts of Amazon. Google have tie up with Walmart in some uh, American states. Believe me, it means Walmart have paid Google um, good number of money to basically get the users from Amazon move to Walmart. Walmart have also have a retail store like Amazon. Walmart sells everything uh, from a toothbrush uh, to boot polish, everything required for the users, including those TVs, digital phones and all those things, right? So whenever Ravindra Pandey searches on a global level, even from Mumbai or from St. Louis about um, his favorite, uh, let's say, uh, brand of, uh, you know, trimmer, you know, trimmer, right? Uh, Men uses those trimmer to trim their beard and, you know, uh, the other thing. So in that type of product, Google suggests them whenever he goes to Amazon, the Google might give him a pop up saying, hey, Ravindra, this Philips trimmer is almost at half the cost at Walmart. Why don't you try it? So you say, wow, at half cost, wow, I, I should get it from Walmart. So what he have done, what Google have done, he converted an, um, you know, uh, what you can say, a loyal Amazon user to Walmart. 
and this is how the business work this is how you help walmart to basically build their business uh, you know um, well you might call it theft you might call it uh, you know uh, forceful nature of uh, converting customer and blah blah thing but in a real world a customer from amazon have been uh, you know uh, moved to walmart because of he find trimmers are really cheaper now with the trimmer he might <clears throat> want to go for some facial cream he might want to go for some you know uh, even inner wear clothes and all those things he might go to walmart to search out and if he find walmart price are a bit lesser because you know be it a walmart or be it amazon these guys earn profits on the basis of their margin so they purchase the trimmer from philips at say ten dollar and they sell uh, it on the website at seventeen dollar or a twelve dollar now depending upon you know these pricing strategies they might capture good number of customers in a progressive market now this is how the business intelligence or the business analytics or a digital analytics works um, in terms of capturing the uh, you know users uh, from other um, uh, retail portal and that's how google built its uh, you know empire or google builds its digital analytics strategy now they are in a version 4 and you know i'll, I'll uh, show you a video how they do it in terms of um, analyzing your digital content what type of digital content uh, they analyze normally they analyze acquisitions or they acquire data online for each and every user acquisition behavior and con uh, conversion this is their uh, you know track online traffic strategy as well as google goes it's a uh, you know uh, fair and simple they have disclosed these things after the european market have sued them for almost around 800 billion dollars or something like that so here what they have did they say now we track your data and they uh, you know uh, basically tell you really you know uh, what you can say frankly or clearly and they do that now what they do, they are building these database in terms of acquisition. So if any company want a data on, let's say, Ravindra Pandey is staying in St. Louis. So Google will happily sell it to them. Even they have a fresh data. So fresh data in the last half an hour, Ravindra was searching for a new cordless phone. Oh, wow, wow, wow. So what he do, he'll inform, uh, you know, a couple of uh, uh, phone companies like, okay, target Ravindra. So on the phone, you might get uh, SMS or a WhatsApp message saying, hey, Ravindra, try this national phone, try this Sony phone, try this uh, uh, Falana Dimkana phone. It's really good. It has this facility, that facility. And this is how they basically do a kind of group digital analytics with the help of Google. And Google might sell this data to a good number of companies. It's not bound to sell this data to just, you know, Southwestern Bell uh, or just to the, you know, Sony, just to the Philips. Google can sell this data to multiple company within few minutes, within few seconds, because they have tie up and these guys have paid a good amount to Google. Could you understand how this digital analytics uh, generating money for Google? Are you understanding? Uh, do you yeah, want me to? Yes. Okay. Please let me know if you uh, if you couldn't understand or you want me to explain it again. Okay, this is how the business model have been built. Now, don't uh, you know take it as a uh, Google as a kind of a villain here. This is the business strategy. This is how the business works. Okay, and that's how you generate money. If you are into business of let's say uh, you know clothing, you might you know import the clothes, uh, import the raw um, cloth material from the region where it's uh, you know built very. Uh, uh, economically and then you uh, bring, uh, you know stitch those clothes uh, where the labor is quite cheap and then you sell these clothes where you can get the maximum return on your products and that's how it works in the world similarly google is the first company because of their wide reach in terms of google search engine and all the subsidiary product they have these user data with them and now they are basically building a mechanism to um, you know, milk money out of it. Now, uh, the case which European Union have been filed is basically monopolizing these things. So they had a monopoly in Android in terms of Android purchased by Google, controlled by Google, tracked and traced by Google. That's why the uh, lawsuit was there. Now what Google says, we are not stopping anybody from building a new OS. So now there are almost three, four different markets who have started building operating system as far as mobile goes because they found 
mobile is really great way to track customer consumer behavior because now everything what we do in terms of our uh, you know uh, behavior can be traced to our smartphones be it a blackberry uh, palm top uh, you know google smartphone or a windows smartphone or any such smartphone and that's why even microsoft have realized like we should capture this mobile os market in terms of from the android progressively now microsoft extensively trying to basically get the users from the google android market to microsoft windows now again microsoft windows is basically also a kind of mobile os it's called a small window um, but again they these are proprietary operating software uh, operating solution provide operating system solution providers so their operating system cost a bit but android comes free android comes tagged with a processor so if you are using any new processor google might charge you a couple of dollars whenever you purchase a new phone couple of dollars when you talk about windows the operating system price might be around 10 dollar 20 dollar 30 dollar per phone but google gives you at a 1 dollar per phone which has all these analytics inbuilt to it now this how they track the online traffic now analyze and understand user behavior we have understood from ravindra pandey's example he is visiting couple of site once a day uh, and for how many minutes so the time is a crucial importance here if you look at overall analytical you know thumb rules whenever a user is on a site for more than 57 seconds he is quite interested in what that site does or he knows what that site does and he want to leverage that site for his own purchasing own understanding like reading news uh, own knowledge uh, like you might call uh, discover uh, you know those um, animal kingdom and blah blah things now this is how overall we track the user behavior progressively with the google analytics and we've seen how this google analytics user behavior helps businesses to target their products now get inbuilt data reports and option customized report with desired key point indicators now what are key point indicators let's say <clears throat> keshav has a mobile company they build some mobile repairing now what they did, Keshav have uh, tied up with Google in terms of they want the local user data in St. Louis uh, or let's say in Kansas region, which is a bit smaller than St. Louis, in Kansas region where the population is around I think uh, 80,000, uh, around 80,000, he captured the user data of smartphone users and he start uh, pushing market, uh, he start advertising via Google uh, saying Ki, okay, we do best possible Android phone repairs within Kansas market and this is how he started building his customer base progressively this is how he tracked these customers in terms of regional need he don't want to check the customers in uh, you know um, Canada or Spain or uh, India or for any any other region he are just interested in customer in only St. Louis uh, in Kansas region and that's how he point, uh, paying to Google and Google is happy to get few dollars these are not very costly solution and for a local uh, you know uh, product company or local company or local service company like a mobile repairing shop it really helps us out so it's a win-win for both and this is how they basically customize a regional report based on a specific key point indicator so if anybody search for mobile repair shop near me in kansas region they'll get this keshav's uh, website link store address uh, store contact information and so on and so forth so this is basically you are building your marketing and state uh, you know sales strategy based on the regional data provided by the it giant like google have you understand the you know kpi kpi is the normal word used for key point indicator for anything which is crucial to a given user and this is how we apply the data or this is how we find out a filtered and sliced data for the need of a particular user with the help of KPI. Does that make sense to you? Anybody have any question for me? Okay. Now there is something called uh, improve online ads, marketing analytics, uh, conversion tactics to track the required conversion. Uh, conversions now this conversion we just talked about in terms of converting a amazon customer to walmart and so on and so forth 
improve online ads so whenever we are basically working with uh, you know uh, a web analytical company like google tie up with google do help a lot of product company even the company which uh, didn't have online presence tied up with google and google web analytical team have given them some free site in good old years and they started building their um, online digital uh, data capture and uh, basically converting the online user from going to another um, you know uh, famous website and bringing this customer to their website this is true with quite a few good number of even video content developer or video content um, suppliers like netflix and other you know even uh, streaming video type of you know services youtube and so on so forth and this is how basically all these original data uh, reports or data captured by google do help lots and lots of companies to convert uh, you know tracking or track the required uh, you know conversion from other uh, um, customers to their customer and there's another you know um, word which is normally uh, what you can say expressed in, uh, in jd called seo search engine optimization what it does whenever ravindra pandey types mobile repair service near me the uh, search itself triggers some uh, you know good functionality telling which is the preferred uh, you know mobile service provider in the, that region and they normally suggest them even the popular one might be uh, what you can say mask or given very less priority so that the user might not notice them so what you are doing you are trying to capture customer online with search engine optimization now let's take a minute and try to understand search engine optimization in terms of how you do it search engine optimization service providers basically update your website with some meta attacks these meta attacks talks about what you do in the service what type of facility are you giving to the users are you selling something are you uh, you know specifically impreaching something on uh, you know uh, let's say some religion uh, some specific uh, preferred language some specific way of living and so on and so forth so you can basically uh, build your op, um, website on some specific uh, you know terminology called meta tags now meta tags are like hashtags you might have used hashtags right in uh, Google, uh, in Twitter or in various other places like that we have something called meta tags these meta tags talks about what the website server is basically is all about and you can do a good amount of marketing uh, from these uh, meta tags because all these search engines normally check the meta tags of a server so if a search engine wants to search for mobile repair shop within a particular area your server should have that meta tags attached or displayed on your server. Uh, I have a video of this session, please. Yeah, sure, sure, definitely. I'm going to share the video. Um, uh, Harini ma'am, you have not missed much. We were just trying to understand how Google Analytics does it working and how Google Analytics helps website traffic to channel through um, as per the required, uh, you know, um data uh, to the given client okay no problem I'm, I'm going to share the recording as well please don't worry so this is how we improve our search engine optimization and you normally build a target group in the sense if you are looking for some news uh, on a particular region then you might visit the local server rather than going to the global server let's say you want to read the news in north america you normally go to the cnn.com if you want to read the news from um, Europe or British, uh, British continent, you might go to the BBC.com. If you want to, uh, you know, um, have a news uh, which is more of a Western civilization, you might go to Google.com. Yes, Google.com have a news.google.com site. They have started in, I think, uh, uh, 2001, 2, 3, something like that. So please have a look at these news site and you'll understand the different news they deliver to you. These are all regional blessed news they normally provide on your website. They try to be a global, but still, as a regional people, you normally tend to give importance to the regional news rather than a global news, and this thing also do happen. Now let's talk about e-commerce performance analysis. Here, we normally do uh, analyze 
e-commerce site performance in terms of how they are delivering, which are the product they sell really easily or really economically. Uh, or uh, if any uh, particular e-commerce uh, have a really good uh, forte in terms of uh, delivering product quicker to you. So we normally have such a, you know, um, a track or analysis displayed on the Google Analytics website and you can have a look at that as well. Of course, the giants are the best because they have all those, uh, you know, finance power to deliver it quickly and so on and so forth. So specifically Amazon in North American market is one of the best, uh, you know, e-commerce or a retail portal available to you. Now, e-commerce portal also have some sort of financial services like economical wallets, like loan, like, uh, you know, a link to a basically uh, house mortgage or uh, personal loans and all those kind of link. And that's how these e-commerce sites are really important as far as a user needs. So whenever we have these analysis built on a site, might be through SEO, might be through, you know, various user behaviors tracking. Google has a great amount of data over here. Even there are servers like, you know, movie streaming sharing services, or even let's say um, one Vladimir from Russia try to, uh, you know, um, sell pirate movie at a very economical price. And yes, there are quite a few such, uh, you know, services available, or there are services like Torrent. Have anybody you, uh, you heard of Torrent? Movie Torrent, Books Torrents, anybody? Yes, Torrents, it's like a web, um, web where you have the books you can download and all. Yes, books, movies and everything. Even okay. sometimes a movie is released and it's available on Torrent within few hours. Now, what are these Torrent guys? Yeah, you want to say something, ma'am? Yeah, no I said everything pirated. Yes, exactly. So these are specifically for uh, pirated things. The Pirate Bay is one of the most uh, uh, to uh, famous torrent site, if you might have, uh, you know, uh, heard or visited. So if you want to download uh, any older sitcoms, might be something like West Wing, House of Cards. I like this, you know, even FBI or, you know, uh, what was that old? Okay, so these sitcoms are available at Pirate Bay without any cost. So how these pirate bays or how these, you know, torrent sites survive, they survive on the user data they are capturing. If they can sell this data to Netflix, to YouTube, saying Ravinder Pandey likes science fiction movies, he likes comedy as a genre in terms of light sitcoms, he likes uh, deep political, you know, geeky kind of serials like West Wing, House of Cards and all, then Netflix has that data really crucial to them and that's how Netflix survived basically. Believe me, Netflix paid a good amount of um, money to these uh, torrent site to get the user data from them. Like what type of movies a particular user or particular regional users like and that's how they build their sitcom, uh, uh, they build their online streaming empire on basis of such data. And that's why a simple data from a user behavior in terms of a smartphone, in terms of their laptop website visiting is really useful for this business. And that's how this digital analytics is thriving in the market. Google Analytics was the uh, founder for as far as digital analytics goes. And it's really built on the data available from that users. So user might have a database or a simple CVS file saying Ki Ravindra Pandey region uh, current Mumbai he might have been in US for you know a couple of years and so on and so forth he likes this this type of movies he like this this type of you know uh, repeated purchase even in terms of consumables believe me after this online market uh, you know release uh, during COVID period there are lots and lots of users they don't spend on gas they don't go to a uh, local market they just on order online and such these um, online retailers like Amazon, Walmarts, they are making great amount of profits due to that. Because what Amazon does, Amazon purchase, let's say 2000 uh, smartphone from a Chinese guy at a price of around $10 or $12 and sells on the online market uh, at their, uh, you know, uh, $20 or $22, which is lesser than the MRP. The MRP is around $30 because, you know, every mobile company have to uh, cover their, uh, you know, what you can say export cost and all those costs. That's why they, uh, you know, price it that way. But due to, you know, something like volume, um, um, volume curve, 
uh, uh, volume purchasing, they can get this uh, really small um, uh, discounted price and they can sell at a good profit to the local customer because small smartphone won't go bad means uh, the what you can say uh, shell life shell life is a concept which we talk about in terms of perishable and non perishable item why we need to understand these things because whenever we do data analytics these things play a crucial part so shell life is an important factor about every product so shell life of a milk is around few hours or the chemically treated milk is around few days a shell life of a smartphone is around two months why two months because by the time two months gets completed the cell phone might have gone older in terms of uh, the older processor in terms of the older version of some uh, gaming software and blah 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 things that's the average thought process built by every product company in terms of their shell life that's why shell life is really important so whenever Amazon purchase 2000 uh, cell phone from a China, Korea, whatever they get cheaper at and they start selling, they know we need to sell this phone within uh, 60 days. After 60 days, they start giving you 20% discount. Same thing like movies. Whenever the movie is new, it's priced at its peak, at its, peak, at its maximum. But the, when the movie goes, uh, gets old, like two months, more than two months, it, you can um, you know watch that movie at a really throwaway price and similarly these type of strategy also get applied to these digital analytics and that's why we have suggestions from this pre uh, pre-programmed model in terms of analytics saying okay if you're working on terms of uh, you know milk based product the shell life is really low so you need to have a good throughput if you're working on something like laptops you might have a shell life of around three to four months Within three to four months, you might get a new version of, um, you know, a processor, new version of a memory, faster memory, smaller size, lesser power consumption and so on and so forth. So any of such changes, basically, users are also intelligent. So what they do, they just scrap out the older one and they go for the new one because improved, faster, efficient and so on and so forth. That's why the performance, uh, new discoveries do help out. Uh, for the right pl uh, platform for marketing even if it's older thing amazon might sell it as a yeah, latest new flashy this color availability that cover co you know cover avail availability and so on and so forth this is how this digital analytics uh, you know world work in a real market so the whoever has the information whoever has the data really helps the uh, product company into a very you know uh, distinctive advantage in terms of how they can sell their product efficiently effectively have you understand that any any question for me at this moment no now please remember google analytics is specifically for website analytics they don't do data analytics like excel data analytics or something like that they are st specifically targeted their products for online web analytics okay now uh, let me play your small video where we'll try to understand how this google analytics helping us out and uh, you know then i'm going to share a, a video with you in terms of doing google analytics for and this is a tutorial for beginner let me play this thing for you so that you can understand have i downloaded give me a minute please Again, uh, Google is the best uh, uh, company to learn from them and they give it to you free. So please don't go to any other website. Okay, uh, man. What the big query, man? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, so here uh, on the screen, I can see how to set up Google Analytics. So right, is there right. a difference between Google Analytics and Google Analytics 4? Yes, ma'am. Google Analytics 4 is the latest version. Okay. okay. Uh, and um, uh, so we normally go with, uh, you know, the latest version, right? Because latest version mm -hmm. have some advantages in terms of, uh, oh, come on. Sorry. Uh, I have, I think, okay, let me go to... Okay, let me share how I do search for the, you know, latest video. Okay, uh, could you see Google here? Okay, yeah, oh, forget about video. Google, let's go to the YouTube. 
Oh, come on. YouTube and I'll search for Google Analytics here. Okay. Google. Oh, come on. Sorry. Google Analytics. Four is the latest version. Okay. If I click here, I get all the. Oh, come on. I've gone to the YouTube, right? I don't know what the heck happens. Okay. No, they have not taken me to the YouTube. So I am now in YouTube and I Google Analytics. This is the four. You can go to the tutorial. You can go to the Google Analytics generic tab also. Uh, the setup is specifically for a given website. So unless and until you have a website, your own, you couldn't set this up. But understanding it's working is easy because you now know what to target, what, uh, you know, not to target and blah, blah things, right? So let me go to the, you know, this is not from the Google, but these guys have, uh, you know, given a great amount of, uh, uh, what you can say, lecture in terms of how you can um, um, do Google Analytics uh, or that's a tutorial. So I'm going to share this uh, video also, okay? And it talks about, uh, you know, uh, 2013 uh, Google Analytics, uh, which is released, oh man, that's older one. Okay, now let's, uh, you know, this is getting started with Google Analytics whole operations. This is from Google Analytics itself, okay? So let's uh, have a look at first introductory video here, okay? It's a small five minute video where okay, these, uh, you know, uh, lady will explain us how we can basically use Google Analytics for our benefits. And that's what we need for interviews. See, uh, unless and until you know the you know requirement in terms of what type of KPIs to track, what type of key points indicator to track, uh, the Google Analytics is only a thought, thought process to be up, applied, right? And that's why uh, this video will give you all these uh, details in terms of what type of uh, you know KPIs to be aligned and so on so forth. I'm going to share the link of this video, so please don't worry. But have a look at it, where you get an actual idea of how Google Analytics works uh, in terms of uh, you know day-to-day -day life. And I'm here today to talk to you about getting started with the new Google Analytics 4 property. I'm super excited about this, as I hope you are too. So let's go ahead and dive into the slide deck for a quick overview. To set the stage, it's no secret that we're living through a period of immense change and end user privacy is top of mind. Around the world, regulatory changes. <laughs> they basically um, uh, get all your personal data and they talk about user privacy. <laughs> Believe me, this is a kind of irony we have in the time. Um, if you want, you can install, uh, you know, on a new website, there are a good number of, uh, you know, servers who let you create free website, okay? Uh, and you can uh, create your own website and try to apply Google Analytics. Uh, and um, there is a, you know, I think video in a Google Analytics uh, list, which I just showed to you about, uh, you know, uh, getting a new website and building these properties or events on that, uh, you know, website in a progressive manner. So it will, uh, you know, let's study uh, you in terms of Google Analytics in the real practical world. Again, this is different from the actual commercial world because if you can trace anybody uh, who is visiting Amazon, who is visiting Walmart, their website, the numbers will be in the uh, case or in the millions to be precise for a given day. So their analytics is a really big analytics, even for a day, even for in a given hour. Even if you look at, uh, you know, Amazon or Netflix, they have uh, more than a few hundreds of uh, such data analysts working in their lab to understand Google, uh, you know, uh, to understand their web traffic uh, users uh, analytics for a given region. And that's how they are building their strategy more aggressively day by day. And that's how they take help from Google, uh, um, you know, analytics or Google data share as well. And that's how they build their, uh, you know, profitability empires day by day. In a digital world, this is a really great thing to understand how sales and marketing have been enabled by this digital world. And try to use the really great word as uh, the, you know, tutor have used uh, to express uh, how they collect the data uh, almost, uh, you know, minute by minute, second by second of every user and store it to sell it to the best possible or the, you know, uh, best bidder. Uh, in their given data selling world. Okay, now let me, you know, complete you or uh, let me basically explain you again the data analytics in a uh, new this modern world, how they, you know, got it working and view uh, in a next session, we might uh, throw a light on Tableau and big data.
So these are the two things which we'll do in next sessions. But today, let's try to understand how this modern data analytics is helping us out in terms of now, building a data analytics pipeline or how to build a scalable data analytics pipeline. This is I have taken from my Google uh, training uh, video, uh, training uh, uh, presentation of a Google uh, cloud implementation. Okay, so it's called GCP. So let's try to understand how Google cloud is helping uh, to build better data empire as we say in a normal thing. So you have a cloud, a public cloud or a you know hybrid cloud one way or the other which is piping the data through these different you know databases or through these different data sets. So you can have a you know cloud data flow captured, you can have a big data which we're going to you know speak um, um, in our next session, big data in the sense it's a gamut of technology we are working together to capture data. This is a modern way of capturing data, almost a, a petabyte of data in a given day. Petabyte means uh, there's a um, uh, you know kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, then we have a petabyte, then we have um, you know uh, many many uh, um, what you can say a large amount of data we are talking about here. Okay, then we have data transfer service, so all the data transfer service in terms of if you might be processing your let's say uh, payroll on a given day. So what you do, you normally transfer the data from your organizational ERP uh, to your pay scale processing uh, module and this data transfer basically takes place to the cloud. So even you know through the cloud, the cloud server service provider can capture the data and uh, you know sell it to some different people also. And these things do happen in a real world. And but yes, there are uh, all legalities, laws are in place to not to you know, let uh, let it do such things to all these you know cloud service provider. But it happens in a real world, okay. And there are lots and lots of lawsuits against such cloud service provider as well including Amazon, including Google and many such cloud service provider. The storage transfer service. So whenever you transfer storage and these are what you'll count a favorite tool of data capture, like your data backing up mechanism. Every smartphone has a data backing up mechanism, which comes free of cost to you. And you will say, wow, this, uh, you know, smartphone service provider is really a brilliant looking, um, you know, uh, taking care of me, but on the ground, what he's doing, he is basically getting your data to his or her server and try to analyze what type of data can I, you know, uh, sell it to others. And believe me, this is a real business, uh, you know, uh, thing happening in the real world. So as I told you about a photo, I took a photo of my dog. I don't have dog, but let's uh, think it hypo hypothetically. When you took a photo of, um, you know, dog, name it. Uh, and then if you publish it on Facebook, so Facebook say, wow, this person has a dog. Now that's a kind of false impression uh, these guys have got and believe me this is how they process then they'll start selling me dog foods try this on your own and you'll get a couple of dog food mechanism and dog food um, you know emails in your message box or in your whatsapp saying okay we sell really good dog food or you know dog consultation services and blah 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 things this is how it happens whenever that backup and syncing processor in your you know, processes in your smartphone desktop and all things then we have cloud internet of things. Now we are going into the automated world or robotics world here. Internet of things means there are all connected things like your Alexa. These are all connected robots to the internet 24 by 7. And that's why it's really crucial. If you talk anything which is really, you know, um, crucial to your family, uh, crucial to your finances, Please don't do it in front of Alexa, Google Home or any of such smart devices, even your smartphone. Keep it away from me. I'm not trying to make you paranoid here, but try to understand the, you know, uh, data stealing mechanism here and how these guys are, uh, you know, pulling data out of your conversation left and right, because we have all great voice decoders nowadays, which we have developed in last three, four years. Could you understand what I'm trying to say here? Uh, can you hear me? Am I audible? Yes, we do. Okay, no problem. Okay, so all these things, that's why I kept this image uh, in our presentation and I'll share this presentation with you today so that you can understand or you can build your answers in depth in terms of uh, such, uh, you know, modern data analytical processes. Then we have a uh, cloud data preparation. 
this is how you extract information from the data shared with you and then you infer it to the business you share it with the business you present it to the business to capture better consumer base to increase your number of consumer day by day okay big query storage talk about uh, they use something called no sql we have used sql right sequential query language we have practiced on it but there is another query language called no sql which is more near to english or more free depending upon the software you use and that's how we can basically query these big query storage and then generate big query analytical design or uh, we can build a big query analytic engine so these engines are very specialized engines like find out age group um, of uh, science fiction movies which are uh, find out the age group uh, the users watching science fiction movie or something like that and you keep running similar query um, or day after day or hour after hour on this big big database where you're trying to find new customers and try to fish your product down their throat and that's how the marketing and sales happens in a real world and now there are companies who are building better engine like cloud data um, fusion uh, cloud composer data catalogs and so on so forth these are all new techniques uh, to gather your data and sell it to someone else. And that's how they make their really great, uh, you know, companies. And this is what they call data research company. You might have seen some data research company. Am I right? Do you know about data research company? Anybody, anyone? They, most of the time they do data fishing. Right, data capture. They capture your <laughs> data, data letter, right? without your knowledge yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so i mean we we could be controlled but with the, all the young kids they capture all the data with uh, i mean because with all this instagram and what all this i mean they 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 i mean their life is only on the phone so, that's that's true there was a satire on whatsapp couple of uh, you know uh, weeks back uh, a person orders a pizza now the pizza lady tells uh, him hey boss you are overweight so don't order extra cheese pizza uh, you don't have really uh, you know uh, money to pay for this pizza as well so either you should first apply for the personal loan and then come to me and uh, that's that's a kind of satire but believe me this is how these retailers these new shoppers really go getting deep into your data first and even if you try to do anything you know out of the line or if you try to do something different they'll stop you they say oh no no you can't do that because of this, this reason and they know better you than <laughs> yourself because you know i might have a mood to eat pizza even if i'm overweight i shouldn't eat but I, I might have a mood or i might have a you know mood to have a big mac which is really a big fatty burger right but at the end of the day magdi might comes and tell you hey ravindra you shouldn't have meat you know uh, big mac you should have veggie burger <laughs> something like that and believe me the you know shopkeepers are really working on these you know young people who share everything on their mobile uh, to their friends they believe they are share sharing with their friends but at the end of the day all these guys they are getting the data at the other end of it or the crooked end of it and they try to you know uh, force down their product uh, to uh, to these modern people world believe me even if uh, you know you know uh, i'm in india and the food in house is really great because we have ample of time we have really you know great cooks and everything but still the swiggy of the world the zomato of the world they are uh, do, uh, doing business in billions how they can do it because of these uh, sales campaign marketing campaign the mac burger in india is a really well, i shouldn't say this uh, and it's on recording so i'll stop myself is not really healthy food but if you look at the pohas the upmas uh, and you know the um, uh, our breakfast in terms of indian culture it really helps out to build your protein intake it's really you know quite easy to digest to digest a burger your stomach need at least three days to digest a upma it gets digested in around six hours could you understand what i'm trying to share here share here but still today's kid if you put a upma or a burger in front of them they'll 100% eat burger. Hardly one or two kids will normally go for Upma. Could you understand me? What I'm trying to say here? Yes. Captured the. Yeah. 
so we need to be really careful on such you know uh, what you can say streamline marketing or bombarding campaign to all these modern or the new kids of the world and we need to basically educate them ki boss this is not good once in a blue mean fine but this is how the digestion process work for the in, you know uh, your stomach your you know body and then this is what you should have and so on so forth. so yes we need to really build our overall a uh, life uh, what you can say improvement in uh, uh, after understanding these uh, you know uh, data building or scalable data model or scalable analytical you know pipeline building kind of scenario and on top of that we have really great you know uh, all these frameworks if you might ask these are all frameworks which are used to basically make automated uh, you know these solution these are all data scientist uh, you know tools uh, used in a real world today so we have used data analytics use advanced analytics by google itself then we have cloud ai platform uh, for machine learning by quite a few company tensorflow is from google looker is from google which normally collects the data from the sheet and build graphs automatically uh, if you have a pre programmed script written for that like we see in uh, you know um, um, power bi you can build a pre programmed Uh, graph generating script based on a given data set based on a given excel sheet this is how the overall you know uh, data uh, pipeline is being improved day by day this is just to make sure you understand how we are improving uh, not by leaps and bound but by miles and miles together in a given day and that's why we need to understand the gamut of data analysis and that's how the data analysis jobs are increasing in number by Uh, hundreds of job piped in day by day and this is a really right time to start capturing our job which can pay us of um, you know uh, around our expectation please do st uh, start your job search please do start pushing your you know um, applying uh, if you are not getting enough uh, you know job uh, queries please contact your uh, hr administrator and um, uh, sorry hr coordinator ask him or her to give me give you more uh, you know jobs uh, around your area or around your uh, you know uh, preferences okay please do that thing so that we can capture the job as early as possible we'll have one or two more session uh, one session where we'll basically discuss this uh, Uh, tableau and big data and then we'll move to the mock interview session so by i think wednesday um, uh, and friday we'll have mock interview session where we normally talk about um, how to um, basically answer the question like tell me about yourself uh, tell me about your current project tell me about data analytical processes and so on so forth so please start working on those things and you know uh, we will basically Uh, get better day by day will improve ourselves day by day to basically uh, clear the first obstacle called job interview with a best possible efficiency does that make sense to you yeah, yeah. okay anybody have any question uh, please uh, you know feel free to ask no problem chalo let's meet uh, again uh, in a next week uh, uh, when we have our next session on um, 13th right monday okay so monday we'll meet we'll discuss about tableau and big data and then we'll move to the mock interview session and then within a week or uh, you know um, uh, within uh, i think 7 uh, and 10 days we'll start our new batch okay and that's how we normally uh, start learning again from the scratch Okay, chalo. Thanks, thanks a lot for your time. Have a good night. Take care. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night.